This video is a follow on from the last one. In this edition, I'll talk about how to voice a major chord with five or more distinct pitches, and then show some examples voiced for a big band. Here's a basic C major 9. We have five distinct pitches. This could be played by five horns easily. By the way, these examples sound pretty good because they are actual instrument samples that are pulled from my You Go To My Head video. It's a bit plain. Let's add a low C. If you have a bass trombone, then that's a nice option. This is very similar to the chord at the beginning of Miles Ahead. Let's try something slightly higher. This is nice. Notice how I've placed the third in the bass clef, even though it's higher than the ninth, D. That's because I'm automatically thinking of a trombone voicing. If you place the trombones on the first, third and seventh, you'll get a solid sound. A mid-range trombone will be louder than a low trumpet or sax, so it's better for a trombone to play it. We could have a 6-9 chord. Ah, that's nice and sweet. Let's place the melody higher, and I'll try the voicing of stacked thirds below the melody. This will give a nice solid sound that would sound good with a variety of horns. The spacing between the low C and the E an octave and a third higher is fine in this register, as the chord is nicely filled out under the melody. Now let's add a sharp 11. Notice how I changed the 5th for the sharp 11th. The 5th isn't giving us much flavour, so it's the first note to get changed. Notice the edge that the sharp 11 brings to the chord. Let's try it with a 6th instead of a 7th. This is cool because we get a D triad over the C. One thing I love about voicings is that with the same notes you can choose the sound and the consonance or dissonance level. I'll show you what I mean. Here's a C major 9 from earlier. We have a C, B, E, D and G. It sounds sweet and consonant. Now with those same pitches we can create a vastly different sound. Cool, eh? These examples are with trumpets and trombones. So by the time you add different instruments, you have endless combinations of sounds. Here's another example. C major 9 sharp 11 from earlier. And now with all the pitches bunched up closely. Spicy, right? Voicings in fourths and fifths can sound good with five or more pitches as well. But I find them most useful when I can add a note to add some solidity. I'll show you what I mean. Here is a very open sounding voicing with perfect fifths stacked up. And now I'll place the third inside the chord. So we still have mostly fifths, just with the third down the octave. Hear how nice that is? You can still keep the E on the melody if needed. Compare that to the one from before. And now with the third inside the chord, Judicious placement of the 3rd and 7th will always lend a good amount of stability to the voicing. Let's put that idea to the test. I'll place a root, 7th and 3rd in a good place. Now I'll pick some dissonant notes to accompany them. Let's try a sharp 9 and a sharp 11th. Tasty, right? Even though it's fairly dissonant, the 1st, 3rd and 7th help to stabilise the chord. Using the same pitches, but in different octaves, if I place the 3rd and 7th above the other colour tones, the sharp 9 and sharp 11, what do you think will happen? It becomes a bit ugly and unstable. The 3rd and 7th generally need to be below the 9ths, 11ths and 13ths. Now I say generally because there's always ways to include them. But just be careful. For instance, it's common to place the 9th between the 7th and 3rd just like I did on this chord. OK, let's move on to six or more pitches now. I'll go more quickly now as the concepts stay the same, really. Let's start with C major 13 sharp 11. That works. You can hear how the low third here is a little grumbly. Let's place it up an octave. As you add more pitches, it's important to keep the chord nice and clear. It sounds better. Having pitches close together in the lower register will make things sound muddy.
and we can add the fifth if we really want to get to seven pitches. That's all of the pitches of the C Lydian scale. You've probably noticed that I haven't used the natural eleventh or fourth in any of the chords so far. Traditionally, that pitch is left out because of the dissonance it creates against the third. In modern big band writing, you do hear it. One of them was in my Seven Great Big Band Arrangers video, where Maria Schneider used it. If you're going to use the eleventh and the third, it tends to sound best when they're right next to each other. When the F and the E are an octave apart, it tends to sound a bit dank. When you really need to get lots of notes into a chord, it can be nice to have a low root note. This helps to ground the chord, and stabilises the extensions above. Nice right? Let's try what we did before, where we have a really solid foundation, this time with the low rich B flat, and place some dissonant tones above, this time with a sharp 11 and an augmented 5th. Interesting right? The nice low bottom B flat gives the more interesting notes a solid platform on which to sit. This idea reminds me of Gill's ending chord on Buzzard Song. We have a low C sharp underpinning it all, with a sharp 9 next to the 3rd. Now let's look at something with a higher tessitura. This area starts to invite discussion about big band instrumentations, because as you can see from this voicing with 6 horns, there is a bit of a gap in the middle. It sounds okay, but just by adding something in the middle, it makes it so much better. I've doubled the melody an octave below. This is common in big band writing. But let's say you just had six horns and you wanted a higher melody note like that. Well that's totally possible. You could do something like this, with the trombones getting into their higher register. Or if you like the sound of the low trombone, then this would work too. Placing the horns closer together at the top creates a lot of excitement. I know the 3rd and 7th are quite high in this voicing, but they're still below the sharp 11th and 13th, so there isn't any problem with the stability of the sound. Now I haven't touched on voicings that don't contain a root in this video. It's definitely possible, it's just that as you add more horns, it can be easy to overpower the root note if it's only present in the bass. <coughs> If I were to do rootless voicings with 6 or more pitches, I would keep to the same idea of putting the 3rd and 6th or 7th in a solid register, like this, or like this. Here's what a more dissonant chord sounds like with no root present in the horns. It sounds strange, doesn't it? Here it is with the C reinforced with a horn. It's a bit more stable. Ok, let's voice a couple of chords for big band. As I mentioned before, there are endless combinations, so I'm just going to throw a few simple concepts at you. If you like this vid, I could always do another one where I discuss some more advanced voicing ideas. Here's some basic guidelines for big band voicings. Make sure each section sounds complete and vibrant. Write in a sensible range for each instrument. Don't write the saxes too high. And don't leave big spaces in the voicing. Let's take a voicing we did earlier and lay it out for big band. This is a nicely contained voicing, so simply taking each of the five pitches and assigning them to each saxophone would work well. All of the ranges are fine. This does mean that all of the pitches are doubled, but there's nothing wrong with that. It will be louder and fuller of course. Here's the saxes on their own. Having each section sound good on its own isn't a hard and fast rule, but it's a good one to apply when starting out. Here's the brass on their own. And now, tutti. Let's take a voicing that has a larger range. Here is how I voiced it earlier. Trombones, nice and solid. And the trumpets have the D triad, with the melody doubled an octave below by the fourth trumpet. That's a classic voicing. Now when adding the saxes, I wouldn't place the alto sax up here, it will be too high. I think from this D below would be a good starting point. And I can complete the chord like that. Here's the saxes. And now the full tutti. 
That sounds good. Another option would be to swap the root for the 7th, and then change the higher 7th to a 13th. Here's what that sounds like, with just the saxes, and tutti. Now I know that means there isn't a root note present in the saxes, and hence the chord isn't complete, but having the 3rd and 7th in a good place in the saxes, just like in the brass, makes the sax chord on its own sound nice and stable. I haven't mentioned the bottom end much. Who should play the bass note? The barry sax or trombone? Well, each arranger does it differently. Some mostly use barry sax, some use trombone, and sometimes you'll see them doubled. I think one thing to consider in the decision is that the baritone sax can get lost in the middle of a 2D big band chord. When it is nice and low, its grunty, pointed sound can be heard. If it is placed higher, it can be a good idea for the baritone sax to double the melody an octave or two below, or double another in a part. Here's the same chord with the baritone on the bottom. And just the saxes. And now with the trombone on the bottom. I'd say the trombone on the bottom is a little rounder, and that the barry sax is a little more pointed and grunty. It's just one of the fun options for you to consider. Here's the chord with a baritone and trombone doubling on the bottom. Well, I hope you enjoyed that roundup of voicing a major chord. Leave any questions you have in the comments section below. 